Fun fact. Lucy was a passionate dog lover and had several beloved pets throughout her life. One of her most famous dogs was a toy poodle named Chester. Lucille adored Chester and often included him in her personal life and even on her television shows. In fact, Lucy's love for dogs was so strong that she featured a dog named Ricky in an episode of I Love Lucy. The episode, titled The Dog License, revolves around Lucy and Ricky trying to get a dog license for their new pet, leading to a series of comedic mishaps. Chester was often seen as a companion to Lucy, and her affection for dogs reflected her warm-hearted nature and love for animals. Lucy's bond with her pets added a personal touch to her life and showcased her playful spirit. The Lucy Show, starring Lucille Ball. Co-starring Vivian Vance. That's right. None of the other dogs ever barked a night until this new one moved in. He's the troublemaker. <laughs> Here we go again. There's Howard McAdams' Pomeranian. And next will be Audrey Simmons' Beagle. <laughs> and now comes Grandma Sutton's Airedale. There we are. And now for the grand finale, the Hamilton's Police Dog. <laughs> well, thank goodness. I was afraid he wasn't going to make it tonight. <laughs> oh, Lucy, this is terrible. Well, I've had it. I have had it. I got to do something about it. What's his number? Well, I don't think that dog is listed. <laughs> I don't mean the dog. I mean his owner. Oh, now you wouldn't wake that poor soul up in the middle of the night to complain. I would love to. What's his name? I don't know. <laughs> Come on, get your flashlight. What for? We are going to find that dog and his owner. Oh, now why couldn't we find that beast the first thing tomorrow morning? Because we can't find him in the daytime. That's when he rests his voice. <laughs> no, just forget it, Lucy. I'm not going to go prowling around in anybody's backyard in the middle of the night. Oh, uh, Viv, please. That's <laughs> the only... <laughs> <laughs> flashlight. <laughs> Oh, come on. As long as we've gone this far, we might as well look at a couple more yards. Oh. Listen. It sounds like it came from right in that next yard. Yeah. tag on his collar to see who he belongs to while I hold the flashlight. <laughs> oh, come on now, Viv. How can you be afraid of him? He has such nice eyes. How can you tell? Well, all right, I'll do it. Yeah. Uh, well, there now. Hi, fella. Hello. Hello. All we want to do is just 
Look at your tag and find out who your nice owner is, little fella. <laughs> he's a he's a nice fella, yeah. He's a he's a nice fella. Hey, yeah, nice boy. <laughs> nice fella. Can't you find his collar? I can't even find his neck. <laughs> I know it's in here somewhere. <laughs> oh, Bib, stop him! Stop him! We can't let him get away now. Come on, hurry up! Oh, honey, oh, honey. oh, how could we lose a dog as big as that? Why didn't you follow him better, Viv? Well, I'm sorry, Simon Legree. I lost the scent when he crossed the river. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, 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 for oh, heaven's oh, sake! Oh, well, my heaven! Well, well, no wonder we couldn't find him. While we were following him, he was following us. <laughs> What's going on? Hi, Nelson. You know him? Sure, we're old pals. He's Mr. Mooney's new dog. Well, I'll just call Mr. Mooney and complain. All right, Jerry, school tomorrow, back to bed. Come on, now. Now, we know where you live. Now, you gotta go home. Come on, Nelson. Home you go. Here you go, boy. <laughs> Mooney, we gotta get this thing settled once and for all. Now, Lucy, I think you better think this over. If you call Mr. Mooney, he's liable to cut off your allowance. He may not even know that his dog is keeping everyone awake. Actually, I'll be doing him a favor by telling him. Now, let me call. Go sit down. I didn't disturb you. Oh, no. <laughs> well, you see, a barking dog has been keeping us awake. Well, thank you for that news bulletin. <laughs> Wait, Mr. Mooney. It's your dog, Nelson. He's kept us awake three nights in a row. He's been creating quite a disturbance. Nelson? A disturbance? That's impossible. Nelson is a thoroughbred. Oh, I know that, Mr. Mooney, but he does have a very loud bark, and it sets off all the other dogs in the neighborhood. And with all that racket, we just can't get to sleep. I thought you'd want to do something about it. Oh, I do, I do. <laughs> you just put your phone by your pillow, and I'll sing you a lullaby. <laughs> Mr. Mooney, if that's all you plan to do about this, I may have to take action. I may force you to keep that dog quiet. Oh, and just how do you intend to do that? Well, I can always... I will simply... Well, I'll, I'll do something. If I might make a suggestion, why don't you sue me? That's a very good idea. I will sue you. <laughs> you don't stand a chance. Good night. You're going to sue him? That's right. Oh, Lucy, you haven't got money enough to hire a lawyer. I will be my own lawyer. <laughs> oh, you poor little thing. You're half crazed from lack of sleep. <laughs> Not at all. But you don't know anything about law. I don't have to. I'm right. He's wrong. This is a lead pipe cinch. <laughs> Besides, I've picked up a lot of legal tricks from Perry Mason. <laughs> Question 1. What is keeping the residents of Lucy's neighborhood up all night? 1. Fire alarms. 2. Dogs barking. 3. Owls. Question 1. What is keeping the residents of Lucy's neighborhood up all night? 1. Fire alarms. 2. Dogs barking. 3. Owls.
The answer, dogs barking kept them up at night. Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. Are you Mrs. Carmichael or are you her attorney? Yes. <laughs> yes, what? Yes, sir. You misunderstood. I asked you whether you were Mrs. Carmichael or Mrs. Carmichael's attorney. Oh. Uh, well, uh, Your Honor, I'm both. I'm Mrs. Lucille Carmichael and I am acting as my own attorney. Very well. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael is bringing an action for injunction to abate a nuisance. Will the attorney for the plaintiff please call the first witness? <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael, you are the plaintiff. Oh. <clears throat> Your Honor, before I call my first witness, I should like to say that this is no ordinary squabble between two neighbors. Today, we are going to ask a question. Does one man have the right to destroy the peace of mind of an entire neighborhood? And I say to you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the answer is no. No, a thousand times no. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael, there is no jury. Uh. <laughs> no jury? Those are spectators. We usually have a jury in criminal cases. Well, if, if keeping a person up half the night isn't a crime, I'd like to know what is. Mrs. Carmichael, please call your first witness. Yes, Your Honor. I call Mrs. Vivian Bagley. Mrs. Vivian Bagley. <laughs> Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Be seated. Give the court your name and address, please. Um, Mrs. Vivian Bagley, uh, 132 Post Road. Uh, now, Mrs. Bagley, will you tell the court, in your own words, the mental and physical anguish that you have experienced because this inconsiderate wretch has let his undisciplined beast yowl the entire night? Well, I haven't been able to sleep at night. Yeah. And the other morning, I overslept. And I, I, I missed the biggest sale that was ever on at Dee Dee's dress shop. <laughs> I didn't know Dee Dee had a sale. <laughs> oh, yeah, she had alligator bags at half price. You're kidding. Yeah, but they were all picked over. You know. I know, they were all picked over when I, I had have had a pair of alligator I shoes that. for six I months. I thought that I needed a bag. Mrs. Carmichael, this seems most irrelevant. Yes. Shall we get on with the testimony? Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> uh, Mrs. Bagley. Yes? Uh, would you care to tell us what happened last Thursday night? Yes, well, last Thursday night, uh, uh, this dog was barking, and you and I... Mrs. Uh, Bagley, will you be specific, please? Tell the court who you is. <laughs> I is Vivian Bagley. I meant tell the court who went with you. You did. Oh, 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 Lucille Carmichael went with me. Yes. Continue, please. Uh, well, uh, last Thursday night, uh, we heard this dog barking, and Lucille Carmichael and I went out to see if we could find it. And all of a sudden, we went down an alley, and we heard this dog barking nearby. And we went around a corner, and there sat Mr. Mooney's dog, Nelson, just as guilty as sin. Your witness, Mr. Weitzman. 
<laughs> Mrs. Bagley. Uh-huh. Now, you said that you heard a dog bark, then you went around the corner, and you saw Nelson. Is that correct? That is right. Huh? Then you didn't actually see Nelson bark. No, we didn't actually see him. But then, of course... So, actually, you don't know if it was Nelson barking. It could have been another dog entirely. Yeah, it could have uh, been, no but... more questions. <laughs> the witness may step down. You were a big help. <laughs> He's tricky. <laughs> Call your next witness. I call Mrs. Lucille Carmichael to the stand. Mrs. Lucille Carmichael. <laughs> Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. State your name and address, please. Mrs. Lucille Carmichael, 132 Post Road. <laughs> now then, Mrs. Carmichael. <laughs> of your neighbors before? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I never have. <laughs> Would you say that normally you sleep very well? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Just like a log. <laughs> very well, then. Will you tell the court in your own words what took place last Thursday night? I would be very happy to tell the court. Mrs. Carmichael, is it absolutely necessary to have this incessant jumping back and forth? You're making the bench nervous. Well, uh, Your Honor, if, if you don't mind, please, it, it makes it a lot easier for me to go back and forth like that because then I can tell if I'm witnessing or plaintiffing. <laughs> Continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, what was that last question again? Uh, tell the court in your own words what took place last Thursday night. Well, I was awakened around 2 o'clock in the morning by the barking of all the dogs who live in the neighborhood near our house led off, as usual, by the ringleader. So my friend, Mrs. Bagley, and I went out to see if we couldn't find this beast, and we finally tracked him down. I see. <laughs> and is the owner of that dog in the courtroom? Yes, he is. Will you point him up? That man there. Are you sure? I'm positive. Thank you. Your witness. Mrs. Carmichael, you have testified that you made a long search of the entire neighborhood. That's right. Can you prove this? Mrs. Bagley was with me every minute. Then if you and Mrs. Bagley were together every minute, she was also with you when she heard the dog bark. That is correct. Then actually you didn't see who was doing the barking. No, I certainly did no not. No more questions. <laughs> Wait a minute. You may step down. <laughs> Now, before we call the defense, do you have any more witnesses, Mrs. Carmichael? Well, not at this time, Your Honor. Uh, uh, Your Honor, uh, I'd like to request a recess. On what grounds? Uh, uh, I'd like to present some new evidence. Very well. This court will recess for one hour. Do you really have some new evidence? No. Then why did you ask for a recess? Well, that's what Perry Mason always does when he gets in the jam. <laughs> Question two. Who does Lucy sue to get them to quiet their dog at night? One, Mr. Mooney. Two, 
the police chief. Three, a fireman. Question two, who does Lucy sue to get them to quiet their dog at night? One, Mr. Mooney. Two, the police chief. Three, a fireman. The answer, Mr. Mooney is the owner of the dog. for another recess? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Does the defense wish to call a witness? Just one, Your Honor. Mr. Theodore Mooney. Theodore Mooney, take the stand. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Always. <laughs> Name and address, please. Theodore J. Mooney, 429 Elm Street. Mr. Mooney, do you own a sheepdog named Nelson? I do. Have you ever heard him bark at night? Never. Oh, honestly. <laughs> no more questions. Your witness. dog named Nelson? Mrs. Carmichael, you already know my name and address and the fact that I have a dog named Nelson. That is why we are here in this court. <laughs> your Honor, I believe we have a very uncooperative witness here. You bet your sweet life you have. See? <laughs> You'll kindly answer the questions to the best of your ability. says woof, woof, or <laughs> Well, now then. Your Honor, I move for an immediate dismissal. Mrs. Carmichael has failed to prove her charges that Mr. Mooney's dog, Nelson, had anything to do with the nuisance she claims took place in the neighborhood. No more questions. You may step down. Okay. Your Honor, I have a last-minute surprise witness. Mrs. Carmichael, you have had sufficient time to introduce your witnesses. This court has been very patient with your case. But, Your Honor, Your Honor, you wouldn't want to stand in the way of justice, would you? Well, I didn't actually have that in mind. <laughs> no. <laughs> call your witness. I call Nelson Mooney to the stand. Uh, Nelson Mooney, take the stand. <laughs> Nelson, you watch what you say. <laughs> you 
swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Joel, that was not necessary. <laughs> that when Nelson barks, it starts a whole chain reaction of other dogs barking. Well, that's a very interesting theory, Mrs. Carmichael, but won't it be a little difficult to prove without the other dogs? I have the other dogs. <laughs> they are stationed throughout the courthouse. Howard McAdams' Pomeranian is in the mayor's waiting room. Audrey Simmons' Beagle is in the park commissioner's office. Grandma Sutton's Airedale is in the lobby, and the Hamilton police dog is where, Viv? In the sheriff's office. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had to put the police dog in the sheriff's office. It was... <laughs> Your Honor, I will now demonstrate what happens when Nelson barks. I think this has gone far enough. Now, just a moment, if you don't mind. Oh, Your Honor, uh, Nelson only barks when everybody is asleep. So would you all please close your eyes? Everyone will please close their eyes. Thank you. No, we will not close our eyes. <laughs> oh, well, it was just a thought. <laughs> you can open your eyes. Um, okay, Nelson boy, you know what to do now, Nelson. Remember, you're under oath. All right, now, Nelson, speak. 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 <laughs> Question 3. Who is the star witness that helps win the case? 1. Mr. Mooney's dog, Nelson. 2. A cat. 3. The butcher. Question 3. Who is the star witness that helps win the case? 1. Mr. Mooney's dog, Nelson. 2. A cat. 3. The butcher. The answer, Mr. Mooney's dog, Nelson, helps Lucy win the case. 